All right. So, <coughs> after the Third Crusade's kind of inconclusive historical ending, as opposed to what I saw, uh, what happened next was really the Fourth Crusade, another attempt to free Jerusalem, I think. I'm not positive of that. They may have made the decision. Yeah, no, they decided to go for Egypt uh, for the Fourth Crusade. But the Pope didn't want kings involved. So far, the two crusades that had royalty involved didn't work very well. The one that didn't was this mass movement that wasn't controlled by, by the royals. And it worked extraordinarily well. So their thought was, well, let's not have the kings involved. Let's have the holy only involved i.e. the not kings or something. Um, and so they made the call elsewhere uh, and many many people responded. Unfortunately uh, it wasn't very well organized without this top leadership of, of royalty behind it and they didn't have enough money and they went and sacked Constantinople instead to pay the bills that they owed the Venetians. Well this is going to be the fifth crusade because Constantinople obviously isn't on the box here and wouldn't really or isn't on the map really and and wouldn't you wouldn't be able to play it out it also wasn't much of a crusade when it came down to it in a lot of ways okay um, so the same pope decides okay well let's try again and same rules except this time the papacy is going to fully stand behind it, provide the leadership, provide the money. And they actually do land here. And we have Pelagius, who's the papal legate. We have King John of Jerusalem, Hugh of Cyprus, and your Templars and, and, well, not Hospitallers, are mixed in here with a big crusading army. The goal of this scenario is ostensibly Cairo. And in fact, uh, the victory point situation is such that the Christians start off with a big old, what, seven victory points. If they can take Egypt's five points, they win. They need 12 victory points plus Cairo, 13 otherwise. So it's not really that big a deal if they go elsewhere. But the big prize is gone. Jerusalem's no longer a five-point city in this game. It's a two-point castle. Okay. So, and from now on it will be. Basically, the city's been so racked by these wars that it's no longer as valuable by any means as it once was. And it's also um, no longer really the focus of these crusades, so they wanted to downgrade its value somewhat. Um... So the key sort of diplomatic situation here is you've got uh, the Ayyubids sprawling up to here. Now that other green up here, running along here, are Seljuks. And right now they're pro-Christian allies. They are the one force that's able to be dealt with with diplomacy. But the Muslims don't have a very good target number. They have a zero, so they need a good card to do anything to try to get them out of the war. Basically, the Crusaders had convinced, um, uh, what, the leader of rum, but I can't remember what his title is, uh, Sultan of Rum, uh, to make an attack on, on, uh, on the Ayyubids. And... We also have another weird situation here going between Armenia and Antioch. And Antioch stretches down to Tripoli now. It's kind of combined uh, the county of Tripoli with the principality. Well, you see that Leo of Antioch is here. and We don't have Antioch or, or, sorry, Leo of Armenia is there. We don't have Armenia or Antioch in here. They're in their own little war. And they will ignore you as long as you don't attack them. If you attack one of them, that one will fight you with whatever it has. And, it, and things will remain static in the, in the war with uh, the other. If you attack both, well, they both come in on your opponent's side. 
So in general, they're kind of something you don't want to mess with, I would say. Although Tripoli might be, well, no. Nah, neither one's really worth much points. Antioch's a valuable place, but do you really want to bring Leo into this? Uh, it doesn't seem valuable. This is only a five turn scenario. Uh, the Muslims have to maintain their point value to win. The Christians have already expressed they have to gain five or six points depending on whether or not they add Cairo. The focus is obviously towards Cairo. Um, now historically after I think the, Muslim, the Christians took I think Daimeda uh, the ruler in Egypt said look I'll tell you what, you can have all of the old boundary of the Kingdom of Jerusalem on, 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 the, uh, on the west side of the Jordan. And essentially to give back Daimyata and call this whole thing off. Well, obviously, back in the Third Crusade, that would have been fine, but at this point, that's not the goal. There's a couple of reasons for this. One is Jerusalem is no longer what it was. And the second is taking Cairo out takes the linchpin out on, on this whole surrounding aspect. If you got a weakened Jerus kingdom of Jerusalem back, uh, it, it still leaves you in the same strategic position. This little outpost surrounded completely by hostile territory. Whereas if you added Egypt as your basis. Well, then you could focus on supporting and supplying. There's really not a lot to the west of Egypt in terms of danger. Egypt is one of the richest areas uh, and it's the only rich area really near the coast anymore. So it's very, very valuable to the Crusaders for that. Um, you also have Cyprus in here, as I mentioned. At the end of the first turn, the one special rule in this game, Cyprus, uh, the leader of Cyprus, Hugh, essentially dies. He gets replaced with himself back in Cyprus, and he will um, demobilize every turn and go back to Cyprus. So he becomes really no longer a valuable force for uh, the Crusaders. Not that he's terribly valuable to begin with. He doesn't have a lot of troops. Anyway, uh, we'll see how this works out, especially with the diversionary force up here, which can score points. If they do well, they can win the game for, for the Crusaders. So, to me, there's almost no reason not to go uh, for Egypt. The question is how to get there. Will I have boats, which would make it a lot easier, or without uh, naval ability, do I have to march over land and face a kind of a weak Seljuk enemy? Uh, because it really doesn't... I, the Crusaders definitely look stronger uh, than... The cell, the, well, I'm sorry, then the, uh, uh, the Muslim forces here, the Ayyubites, or however you pronounce them, Ayyubites. Um, all right, well, we'll kick this off. Oh, who starts? Uh, our highest ranking person is Pelagius here, 315. We've got a 318 for the Muslims, I believe the Christians win the ties, so they'll be starting things off. Ooh, except maybe no. Uh-oh, no, here we go. Christians definitely started off because of uh, Kaikaus, or Sultan. So looking at the initial setup, trying to figure out what to do with the Crusaders, because they go first, right? First of all, up here I've got a pretty good leader. This would be the one I'd want to have doing things, but unfortunately he's quite a ways from Egypt and that's not really his goal. We've got good leaders on both sides for the, uh, the, the Sultan of Rum, but again, and not in the right position here. Now down here, this is the force from Acre, and you can see there's like three big units that I've left behind. That's what you have to leave behind because of the leadership of, of the people who are there. Now, a three-point card could get me a naval action to Egypt. 
but with only five strength points, and I don't have one of the big naval cards that'll allow me to push into there. If I did, I would just throw over the entire force into there. That's not going to be an option, so now it gets hard. Do I want to go in with a partial force, which is probably enough to do some significant things in Egypt, but I'm not sure five units isn't enough to capture, uh, to make the surrender demands properly. So it's not quite what I want. If I had enough three-point cards, I could cut through and just attack, but I, I don't know if I have enough to do that. So it, it, painful choices coming into mind here, because if I concentrate in the Jerusalem area early on, um, there's enough points here, six points, that I think is enough to get me my victory conditions. But it's not the advantage of Cairo. See, Egypt's so weak right now. That's the, the draw of Cairo. But I don't know. I don't know which way to go. To me, this situation looks really bad for the uh, Muslims. So what the Christians do eh, right off the bat, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm assessing things wrong. Maybe there's cool cards in the deck that I, I haven't really noticed. But the Crusaders marched up to Banyas. They got it to surrender, but couldn't continue moving. Okay, that's a little painful. They wanted to siege Damascus, start that, take that, uh, start turning this thing around, because there aren't a lot of Ayyubid uh, forces on the board. How, and for that very reason, the Ayyubids played what may be their... Uh, the best card in their hand by far. A uh, plan of attack, it would allow them to move three of their leaders. They could have kind of consolidated their forces and maybe faced the Crusaders in a fair fight. But instead they used it as a diplomatic card, which gave them a one or a two to try to turn uh, the Seljuks away from the Christian side, away from that alliance. They failed, and I, I think that's a real problem because there's no easy uh, solution with them sitting there. Let's we'll see. And things just keep getting uglier. Uh, Damascus fell. It surrendered. One in six chance of that happening. And it does. And now the Christians have that. They're up to ten victory points. They're most of the way there. They need one more city. The Seljuks could easily take Edessa and add to their victory points there. This is very, a very, very troubling for the Muslim player. So the Muslims gather their forces at Aleppo to prepare a counter strike. Meanwhile, who is this? Starts with a K. I can't read. Uh, makes it to Odessa. Long route, two cards. That actually pans out all the decent Crusader cards left. They had this Turkopol levies. That was painful not to play. That would get them two more permanent units on the board. 2-6 Cav would have been appealing, but uh, I think they could only take one because I think one of them's already there for Jerusalem. So that kind of weakens it a little bit. They can't bring Antioch or... Well, Tripoli's not even in this game. And over uh, here, though, the, the Muslims the inter-Muslim fighting. It's not very good for the uh, Ayyubids because they're facing a larger stack and nearly as good a leader. They've got to drive him off of, uh, uh, Edessa um, as far as they see it. Maybe not right away, but they have, uh, have to get him off there if he's going to start scoring some siege value against that. Well, the Seljuk threat's been largely eliminated. Um, we slid up to Edessa and destroyed that army, killing the Sultan himself. I think he's not able to come back with that high uh, army leadership value, but I have to check. Uh, I know, I don't remember if it's the combat value or the leadership value that determines it, but that's a very high leadership value at 8. I think it's that that is the determinant. So that will leave the Seljuks at only one leader, if that's the case. And a kind of slow replacement rate. They, yes, they can throw a lot of units into Mosul, but this was kind of their turn to do something. And from now on, they're not going to be able to do much if they didn't take a city where they can kind of focus a lot of their troops into and then pump stuff from Mosul into. As it stands, I think they've been largely neutered by that attack. We'll see if the Crusaders have an option, though, an opportunity, though. They might be able to march up and ooh, we got to hit them with a penalty because they uh, tried to take Edessa up there. Uh, but anyway, the Crusaders have an opportunity to 
shoot up for Aleppo, actually, which would put the Seldra, uh, the uh, Ayyubids in a dangerous position. Well, the Ayyubids shifted themselves into place at Aleppo to help screen you just in case. Uh, unlikely, very unlikely, but who knows what could have happened because the Crusaders made it as far as Hama. Hams fell with no fight. Hama, uh, they took with the last card as a siege, but you never know. They could have taken one with a siege and gotten an additional card and been able to make it as far as Aleppo. There wasn't much to do. The Abayyads could have come in and attacked, but the numbers aren't with them. They really aren't, even though they have a good leader there. Uh, I'm just not comfortable with hitting the attack there. But it's going to get uglier because the Crusade doesn't have to dissolve as much. Crusader forces don't uh, dissolve. The Templars, the Hospitallers can show up there. Uh, it looks scary, very scary to me for the... Uh, for the Muslim player. Um, I'm going to load this one up because, well, uh, I'll demobilize and then I'll come back after that. Okay, there's the demobilization. Unfortunately, the Ayyubids had to withdraw most of their forces. Um, some of it by choice, for example, from Jerusalem, from Cairo, kind of a rearrangement of where their uh, work effort is. For the Seljuks, they had to pull theirs off. They're going to be coming back in Mosul, which aren't really Seljuks anymore in a sense. This is the rebellion, or maybe they're supporting a rebellion. It's hard, hard to tell what's really being represented there. I don't have enough historical knowledge except from what's uh, in, the, in the rule book itself. Now, and you can see there's a lot of Ayyubid pieces coming back, but they're going to be scattered and spread out. He's not going to get uh, a huge army. On the bright side for them, though, uh, Pelagius' force is down to just two leaders. That means he can only control some seven pieces now, instead of whatever he was able to haul with him before, which was a larger army. Hugh is gone. Now, this is coming back as Walter of Brienne, but he's going to always restart in Cyprus, and that makes him very expensive to activate and bring into play, especially with this northern campaign. It's not right along the coast anymore. It's pushing in. So we may be seeing somewhat more even forces, especially when we look at the good uh, Ayyubid leader. Uh, so that quick blast that the, the uh, Crusaders were able to accomplish on the first turn, they're probably never going to make um, that big a splash again. All right, they succeeded, so that goes away. I'll load this one up.